Today at work, I printed off a copy of uh, Zapfi's uh, The Last Messiah, read it on the bus on the way home, and one of the reasons why I did that is I really like the poignant and poetic language that he uses. It's interesting that he uses uh, such rich poetic language to essentially illustrate as he sees it the tragedy and perhaps the horror of existence. Well, um, yes and no. I can see where he's coming from, but in view of the kind of language that he's using and the way that that essay has been written, I think it's fair to bring up another way of looking at existence itself. Looking at, if you want, the tragedy and the horror of existence. This is a story of a fellow wandering through central Germany in I believe the year is 1348, the great year of the, the Black Death, I think that was the year. <clears throat> in a cloister he saw a freshly painted wall picture and had to stand there long before he could leave it. It was a dance of death across the wall. Pale bones dancing folk off the earth. A king, a bishop, an abbot, a count, a knight, a leech, a peasant, a serf. He took them all. And skeletons piped through the hollow bones to lead them. Goldman's curious eyes took in this picture. There, from what he had seen of murky death, some unknown fellow craftsman drew the lesson, crying his shrill-voiced admonition that all must die in the ears of men. It was good. A very good sermon was this wall painting. The fellow had seen the matter well. His savage picture seemed to moan and rattle. Yet nonetheless, Goldmund had felt it otherwise. Here it was, the necessity to die, that stood painted up st so sternly and inescapably. Goldmund would have liked another picture. In him, death, a wilder song, had a different echo, a voice calling homewards into the earth. Home to a mother, it sounds not harsh and white, but sweet and enticing. Here, where death thrust forth his hand into life, it was as an iron-tongued warrior that he came. And yet his voice had other notes in it, deep, loving sounds, gentle as sated autumn so that near him the tiny lamp of life seemed to shine with a brighter, warmer glow. For others, death might be a captain, a judge, a hangman, a stern father. For Goldmund, death was also a mother and a mistress, crooning the enticements of life, touching him, with a shiver of desire. It's funny that Zapfe seems to cringe in horror before death, but um, the main character in this story <clears throat> sees death as something wildly seductive, something that actually makes life better, the very temporary nature of it, and that death isn't some thief that's coming to steal something in, in the night, it's coming to take you back to where you came from. Now, this is two poetic treatments of the same sort of thing. The brutal horror of existence um, both using poetic language, both coming, one would seem uh, to think, to different conclusions. I think the people that are morbid and of the morbid antinatalist sort 
are in a sense cringing before death um, and there is a different way to see death itself it's a way that scares us because it brings up thoughts of sadistic killers who just kill for the fun of it um, rather than sane people who are instinctively afraid and repulsed by death and disease and all the things that shorten our lives and uh, that erase everything that we ever do. This is set in medieval Germany. There's plenty of other traditions of death being seen in this way. Um, in India to this day, the, the female goddess Kali is seen in exactly the same way. They always insist, yes, you non-Hindus who don't understand us, you think that Mother Kali is ugly and evil and terrible, but she's not. Uh, she's actually one of the nicest and gentlest and most loving of gods, but you have to love her for what she is. And only through loving her and opening yourself up to her uh, can you actually see death for what it really is. If we want to talk about death, how frank are you willing to be? I don't think Mr. Zapfi was very frank at all. Until the very end of his essay, all he did was speak in tones of fear and running away. There's another way to see it. Thank you.